Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. Welcome back to another episode in working with the Far Cry editor. And here we are. We are now in a blank screen. And in this episode, what we're going to be doing is talking about animation. We're going to be going through all the animation options and so forth. So we're going to have lots of fun. Now, if you like this video, certainly press that like button. I'd certainly appreciate that. And if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe as well. I'd appreciate that as well. So let's just dive in, guys. Okay, so here we are. We are in the blank editor here. Let's get going. Now, I'm using an assault mode map, so we're just going to maybe put a couple guys on here. But before we do that, let's add an object. So I'm going to click the object button, and this is the five key. So here we go. And here's all our lovely objects. I'm just going to move that out here. Now, someone was asking about the types of objects, and you can see here we got like a ton of them. So you'll see Far Cry 5, we have 4,721 assets. We have 967 assets from Far Cry 4. And yes, it even comes with Yetis if you're interested. And uh, you can see here, someone was also asking about watchdogs. You can see we got tons of stuff in here. We got apartment buildings, we got skyscrapers. So you don't necessarily have to make a Montana-esque world like as in the world of Far Cry 5. You can make whatever you want. And what Ubisoft has said is they're planning for this to be a service. So we're gonna be seeing more and more assets being released. Now, how they're released, whether it's gonna be like free to like sort of a paid DLC, we'll see. We know that there's three DLCs coming, but they may come out with say asset packs or something. All right, so what we wanna do is create a building. So let's just go into our Far, Far Cry 5 here. We're gonna go into structures. Let's um, hmm, let's see what we got. We got a governmental building here, a hospital. That seems kind of, oh, we did that the other day. We're not gonna do that. Let's, um, all right. Okay, so we got a brewery here. So I'm gonna select this brewery. So I'm gonna select this brewery here and I'm going to drag it out here. And look at that. We got a hovering brewery. Now I'm gonna select this again. You can see how it's it's up there. I'm just gonna move this down and uh, there you go. You can snap right there. We'll have it, ah, right there looks good. Okay, so here is our starting location. Now, of course, being that this is going to be a map that we're gonna be working on, we need a spawn point. So let's open our objects again. Again, this is the five key here. We're gonna look under game, no, it's actually game mode objects here and here's our spawn point. So let's put this here. Now, I think this wasn't the spawn point. I must have grabbed something else. Let's delete this real quickly. I'm gonna select my objects again. And here we go. Now, as far as like the objective markers and so forth, I will be covering those in a different video. So we wanna go to our rotation and let's move, have this guy selected here and let's rotate him to face the brewery. Now let's create our first AI. So here is our AI. I believe this is the six key. And now we have two different types of AIs here. You can see we have civilians here. From, you can see we have um, our faction right here. So we have allies, neutrals, and animals. <laughs> you know, I gotta make an all chicken map. I gotta see how that works. Exploding chickens, it's what's for dinner. So first, we let's add our enemy. We did this in the last video here. And you can see here, we're having different types. We have security VIP chosen, heralds and angels. Let's choose an angel. All right, this guy is looking kind of, <laughs> love this guy. All right, so we got that going here. Here is our simple map. Let's fire it up. I'm gonna go into explore mode. So pretty cool here. He's gonna ignore us. Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> and you can see I just placed him there. And what he's doing is he's just kind of walking around. He's looking more zombie-like than anything. And the thing is, I may not want him to walk over here. Uh, like, where are you going, man? <laughs> All right, dude, have a good time. You may want to place enemies and have them be in specific areas. For instance, I may just want an enemy to patrol this room here. I don't want my enemy to, to go out way far away. So the way we can manage our enemies is through the use of control zones. So let's close this out here, let's get back. So let's open up our animation, and I'm holding down six, and you can see here we have a thing called control zones. So let's click on this. And basically what we do is we design our areas where we want our enemies to be. 
So I'm going to select NPC. And you can see here we have defend, defend, cautious, and move and defend. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I'm guessing defend will have them stand in the area. Defend cautious means they're kind of peeking around. Again, you're going to have to play around to see exactly what this do. The Ubisoft manual is, let's just say, a little bit sparse. All right, so we're going to move over here, and let's define a defend zone. So here you can see this cube here, and I want him to stay exactly within this. Actually, let's get this to match up to the size of this area here. So I'm going to scroll out here, and that way we can know exactly where this guy's going. So I'm going to select this. And now down in the object preferences, here I'll increase this, you can see we have these options. We have a shape. We can make this cylindrical. So if we want him to move in like an arena style, or we can do a box. And again, we can play around with the size parameters here. And we'll do that, and we'll move this slightly over here. Now, if you find yourself really enjoying working in this 3D environment, I highly suggest you look at Unity, because this is very much like working with the Unity engine, actually. It's very similar, it's super easy, and incredibly fun. And you don't just have to make first-person shooters. But that's a different story. Okay, so we have this all set up. You can see here we have our control zone, but if we just run the game, you'll notice something right away. I love how you just like parachute into Explore. All right, so this is our idiot here. He's just like looking around. All right, man, do it. Do it, man. Okay, our buddy is walking. Now that edge right there is the edge of the control zone, but notice he just keeps on walking by. <laughs> He's like, whatever, man, I don't need control zones. You can't control me. Well, the reason is, is he doesn't know about the control zones. So let's get back to the arcade editor here, and let's zoom back out. Now let's select our AI here, and you can see that we have this in our object preferences here. We have a control zone, and right now it's set to default, and I'm guessing the default is probably either the size of this containing structure or the size of the map. Instead, we want to select Defend 5. So if we select our control zone again here, uh, what's really unfortunate is that we can't name these zones. So if you're going to be having lots of different zones, you're just going to have to remember this is defend five or just select on the control zone. Okay, let's try this again. Lord, great collapse. Now you'll see that this guy is just kind of hanging out here and just he's not moving He's standing still and he's muttering like an idiot I wonder if that means that our defend control zone just means he stands still now I was looking at you just shut up now I was looking at in in a Far Cry 4 map editor I guess people were having difficulties making the AI stand still and they're using sort of hacks and they're using animation points to keep the person still. So I wonder if this defend control zone basically takes care of that. All right, for some reason, this guy is deciding to stand still. Let's add just a few more AIs and to see exactly uh, if we can get, get these guys moving around. Stretch the legs, man. Okay, now we got a whole bunch of idiots. Let's all assign them to the same control zone and let's get some crowd motion going. And I'm going to set this guy to use the default control zone. So that way, if these guys start moving, hopefully you'll be able to see one person will be able to move outside of this zone, whereas the others will hopefully patrol around inside of it. Crap! <laughs> okay, there they go. Next to the building. Woo, we got people walking around finally. Time's running out, son. Now you can see they're all huddled in this one area here. Where is this? This? Oh, where are you hey, going? Hey, hey. <laughs> well, and this idiot is still standing hey, still. Hey, still. <laughs> You're too close. Spread out. Hey man, don't blame me. I'm trying to do a demo here. This guy. Look, I, where'd you come from? <laughs> so it's really cool the flexibility that y the ways that you can control the AI here. <laughs> I love her. She's my favorite. Okay, so that's working with control zones. Now, you'll notice here, we'll get to animation points in just a moment, but you'll notice here we have this thing called navigation mesh. And a navigation mesh determines where an AI can actually walk. 
So I'm going to click this button, display navigation match here. And right away, you can, if you come in here, you'll see like these black lines and there's actually a transparency here. Let's make this really, let's remove the transparency. This makes it really clear wh what the net navigation mesh is. This is means, as I said, this is where the AI can walk. Where there's a black border around here, this means the AI cannot walk. They'll basically ignore these things or they won't walk through them. And this is really important when you're designing your structures or designing your buildings because you want to know where the AI can actually access it. Let's, uh, let's add a structure or let's add an object here. So now you can see on the nav, on the nav mesh that the AI is going to basically walk around this item here. Or in this case, in the control zone, they'll go as far as they can within the control zone. Let's check this out. What a blessed day. We gotta keep focused. So you see how they're going to stop probably right around the borders of this thing. The bliss. The bliss. The bliss will set you free. <laughs> okay, there we go. Get the work, guys. This is a demo. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, they're being shy right now. But just keep that navigation mesh in mind as you're placing objects. And it's not just for... Here, let's choose six again. And we will... Actually, let's add our transparency back here. It's not just for, you can see, it's not just for people, but it's also for vehicles as well. So as you construct your, your buildings or place your structures, you're always going to want to make sure that the AI can sort of walk around there. Oftentimes you may write, sometimes you may put a choke point and the AI might not be able to get around the choke point. And that's why, why using the navigation mesh is important. Okay, the last thing we'll cover here, we'll get rid of the nav mesh right now, is to talk about animation points. And this is where you can get your your AI to do sort of random animation. So here, let's add a new AI here. We're gonna add, let's do an ally for once. And uh, how about we do right here? We'll do this biker right here, okay. Now, for now, the biker's just going to stand here, but I, I'm going to want him to do maybe some interesting animation. So I'll click on this animation points. I'll close the animals here, and we'll see four characters. And you see we have various different animations. Now, some animations can work with objects nearby, and some allow them to just hang out and, you know, do it on their own. So you can see we have idle animations here. We have exhausted. We have, uh, let's see, let's move this down here search idle on the ground you can really just play around with all these these various things so here we have a lean on wall animation i'm going to click this and i'm going to put it right over here and i picked this from the shared so this is shared between i believe the enemy and the allies so i'm going to select this guy here I'm going to move him over here, and let's get him close to the idle animation. And we'll move this close to the wall here. We'll move him right here. And let's see this in action. Now here's our guy here. This oh. rally don't need your kind of... What are you doing, man? <laughs> Well, he, he obviously... <laughs> You're supposed to be standing idly on the wall! <laughs> We've got him now! Follow me! Go, go, go! God, you can never put these two together. <laughs> okay, now we have our aviator just kind of hanging out over here away from the enemies. Ah, there, hopefully there won't be any firefights. We'll see. Okay, so here he is. Now we need to add an animation point. So I'm going to... Press the S key, the 6 key, excuse me, and you can see we have our various animation points. Let's close up the animals. We're going to go into shared. Let's just choose idle animations, and uh, let's move down here. Here we go. Sit on ground. Uh, the, the, it kind of gets a little cut off here. If we scroll down here, you can see sit on ground. Oh, 
There, I, I lost my Ajax preferences. <laughs> we'll close this for now. So we got sit on ground treating wound. So we will select that. And you'll notice that when I select this, there is an arrow. And I believe this is the arrow that our person is going to face. So I'm going to press the three key. And now I'm going to rotate this. So he's going to face outward in this direction. And we will, let's move this guy once. We'll select that. Actually, I believe this is the move right here. And we'll move this back here. All right. Now let's see our new animation point. And let's get it a little bit away from the wall, actually, so he doesn't clip through it. All right, here comes our fella. He's going to sit down. Oh, my God, I'm hurt. <laughs> uh, there he goes. Nice job, man. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That's not how you do medicine. This is how they teach you in the Rambo school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Just easing your easing your pain. Now, someone in the last video had asked a question of, about basically toning down the uh, the editor. They were saying that they were getting a low FPS. You can see down here, I'm getting 100 plus FPS. If you're having some issues with the FPS, you can you can basically turn off settings. Now, in this case, I'm not showing it. It should generally appear here. If you're not seeing it down here, you can just go up here and just press view and you'll see arcade editor settings and you just click that and it will show here and you can see you can customize various things. Now, if your if your dialog does that, just make sure just to switch back and forth. I'm sure that will get fixed, but it's basically um it's a little bit it's a little bit irritating. So we can do that and you can see we have engine quality. You can just play around with that. You can turn off the, the viewport quality and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind if you are having performance issues. A few other tips you can see in the last video I told you about moving. You can see this is moving fine, but let's say I wanted to get all the way to the other end of that map. This is going to take me forever. You can change the speed right here. You can see I can move it to 80, and now we are cooking with gas. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Okay, one last thing. Someone had mentioned that they were running into issues. And let's add a new object here. And let's say we'll add our 50 cal. We'll put it right here. Now, let's say for, for things, you were moving things around. And for some reason, the 50 cal got moved under the ground here. Now, let's validate this map here. And you'll see you'll get an object here. Object area not clear. It might be clipping through another object. So what this means is that our, our gun is inside of another object. Now, if right now it's pretty obvious where that gun is, but in the case when you're working with hundreds of objects and stuff, that's not going to be easy to find. But you can click on this error message here and it will take you to it. So if let's go onto the other side just to demonstrate this. Now we're over here. Let's go back to our map validation. And we can click on there and you'll see it takes us to the general area of where that problem is. In this case, we can just go underneath here, bring it, raise that gun up. And now we can validate one more time. And there you go. That error goes away. So keep that in mind when working with objects and placing objects. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. If you're liking these tutorial videos on Far Cry 5's map editor, just let me know. Feel free to hit that like button. That would certainly help. If you have any questions or comments about using the map editor, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do the best to help you out and answer them in a timely fashion. In the next video, we'll keep on playing around with these things. There are different game modes we can, we can work on, for instance, creating an outpost game mode as well. There's also deathmatch, there's team deathmatch, and so forth. And we'll dive into all these things in these videos. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.